Armageddon, a name associated with apocalyptic events of the end days. In the Bible, the book of Revelation identifies Armageddon as the geographical location where the kings of the entire world will be gathered for a momentous battle. This battle is referred to as the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Armageddon is the ancient city of Megiddo, which overlooks an enormous valley in northern Israel. Megiddo stands elevated upon a hill, and since the Hebrew word for hill is Har, Megiddo became known as Har Megiddo, or Armageddon. The history of Armageddon is an extraordinarily tumultuous one. The heavily fortified city was frequently the center of conflict, being conquered at least 25 times. Harmegiddo is a mound consisting of successive layers of destruction where conquerors built upon the ruins of previous inhabitants. The city was coveted for its strategic position along the trade route which linked ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia. Megiddo guarded a crucial mountain pass on this international highway. The fortress city also guarded another main road which connected prominent cities of the ancient Near East. Whoever controlled Megiddo controlled trade in the region as well as the movement of armies. Pharaoh Tutmos III remarked, Capturing Megiddo is like capturing a thousand cities. This vital stronghold was fought over by the Egyptians, Canaanites, Israelites, Assyrians, Babylonians, and Persians. The rich valley bordering Megiddo is referred to in scripture as the Valley of Jezreel, the Valley of Megiddo, and the Valley of Megiddon. Har Megiddo commanded guard over this vast expanse, which according to history, has been utilized as a battlefield more often than any other place on earth. The Bible records various battles in connection with Megiddo, the king of Megiddo is listed among the Canaanite kings defeated by Joshua and the Israelites. The book of Judges speaks of how years later, the Israelite tribe of Manasseh was unable to drive out the Canaanite inhabitants of the city. Evidence for the presence of the Canaanites at Megiddo can still be seen today, such as the city gate, and most notably, a temple complex which includes a large circular altar measuring more than 8 meters in diameter. Another advantage offered by the city was its water supply. After defeating the general Sisera's Canaanite army, the Israelite judge Deborah referred to the kings of Canaan fighting by the waters of Megiddo. Immediately outside the city lies a cave in which a water spring emerges. Access to the spring was essential for the city's residents when under siege by enemy armies. As a remarkable engineering feat of antiquity, the spring was made accessible from inside Megiddo. This was accomplished by cutting a 36 meter deep shaft into the bedrock, connecting with a 70 meter long horizontal tunnel hewn out of the rock leading to the waters. 
Access to the spring from outside the city had been blocked off with a large stone wall and was concealed with earth, preventing a besieging army from discovering the water source. After the time of the Canaanites, Megiddo came under the control of the Israelites. The Bible mentions Megiddo among the cities which were fortified by King Solomon, the third king of ancient Israel. Not far from the Canaanite gate, there remains a portion of what is known as the Six Chambered Solomonic Gate. It was identified as such because of its close resemblance to the gates found in the cities of Hatzor and Gezer, which were also fortified by Solomon, as recorded in scripture. The outline of an Israelite palace is among the best preserved architectural remains at Megiddo. The skillful construction of the palace is evident in the precise symmetry of the building stones. Nearby are the remains of horse stables with stone tying posts and feeding troughs. The Bible speaks of how Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen whom he stationed in his chariot cities. The stables, having room for nearly 500 horses, testify to Megiddo having been a chariot city, as would be expected for a place so familiar with war. A massive grain silo with a storage capacity of 450 cubic meters was found at Megiddo. There are two sets of stairs built into the sides of the structure. It is probable that wheat grown in the valley was stored in this silo to sustain the city's inhabitants in times of siege. The silo was dated to the time of King Jeroboam II. The Bible identifies this king as a ruler who is remembered for his wars. Jeroboam is mentioned by name on the inscription of a seal which was found in Megiddo, which reads, To Shema, servant of Jeroboam. Through archaeological exploration at Megiddo, countless artifacts have been discovered which are housed in museums in Israel and throughout the world. Objects found through excavations give glimpses into the cultures of the ancient peoples who occupied the city. The Bible records how Ahaziah, king of Judah, was fatally wounded in his chariot by which he fled to Megiddo, where he later died. Decades later, Pharaoh Necho led his Egyptian army to war with the king of Assyria at the Euphrates River. Josiah, the most noble of the kings of Judah, sought to intercept Necho in the valley of Megiddo. In the ensuing battle, the Egyptian archers shot and killed Josiah. His body was then taken by chariot from Megiddo to Jerusalem for burial. The people of Judah and Jerusalem deeply mourned and lamented for their beloved king, an event significantly alluded to later in scripture. Standing at Har Megiddo, looking across the Megiddo Valley, one can see other places of biblical significance. Located near the edge of the distant ridge is Nazareth, the town of Jesus. The 
Bible records how an angry crowd attempted to throw Jesus off the brow of the hill upon which Nazareth was built. Close by Nazareth is Mount Tabor, the likely mountain where Jesus was transfigured in the sight of his three closest disciples. Scripture speaks of the mountain being covered by a bright cloud, out of which a majestic voice said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Not far from Mount Tabor is the hill of Moray, near to where Gideon and his 300-man army defeated the Midianites in the Jezreel Valley. And south of the hill of Moray is Mount Gilboa, where Saul, Israel's first king, died while in battle against the Philistines. Scripture records that after Saul was wounded by archers, he deliberately fell on his own sword, killing himself, to avoid being captured alive by his enemies. The Philistines later hung his remains in Beth Shan, at the eastern end of the valley. At the foot of Mount Gilboa lie the remains of the ancient city of Jezreel. It was here that the infamous Queen Jezebel was murdered by her own servants. In more recent times, the area of Megiddo was the place of military conflicts when Israel gained its independence in 1948. Previous to this, towards the end of World War I, the British forces led by General Allenby defeated the Ottoman Empire at this site, a battle commonly referred to as the Battle of Megiddo. This was also the area where Napoleon's army fought at the end of the 18th century. While overlooking the Megiddon Valley, Napoleon said, All the armies of the world could maneuver their forces on this vast plain. It is the most natural battleground on the whole earth. On the map of modern times, Armageddon is situated in the midst of what is perhaps the most volatile region on earth. At the edge of Israel's Carmel mountain range, it is within a 60 kilometer aerial radius of Syria, Jordan and Lebanon, and it is less than 10 kilometers from the Palestinian controlled West Bank. Armageddon's position has been described as the intersection of Africa, Europe, and Asia. And it is located along the network of Israeli highways connecting Haifa to Jerusalem. The book of Zechariah from the Bible prophesies a great morning in Jerusalem which it compares to the morning in the Valley of Megiddo, an apparent reference to the death of King Josiah after he was pierced by the archer's arrows. This future morning in Jerusalem is described in the preceding verse of Zechariah, where God says, They will look upon me whom they have pierced, and they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son. And he bearing his cross, went forth to the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him. One of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. These things were done that the scripture would be fulfilled. They will look upon him whom they have pierced. A similar statement is found in the book of Revelation's introductory verses. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Further on in the book of Revelation, it describes the great river Euphrates being dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. The text goes on to speak of evil spirits who go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. The narrative is unexpectedly interrupted by Jesus, who says, Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his clothes, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. The narrative then continues, and he gathered them together to a place called in Hebrew, Armageddon. The 
The sudden interjection by Jesus reflects the suddenness of his future coming. His words warn of the need to be prepared for the day of judgment, an event which the Bible describes as the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. discoveries surrounding the ancient city of Megiddo confirm the remarkable historical reliability of the Bible. Such reliability validates the Bible's forewarning of a future judgment associated with a place called Armageddon.